Welcome to the Season 12 SWE Guide, or better known as Strengthened Weakened Effect. Uh, if this is your first time here to the channel, thanks for joining us. If you haven't subscribed, please do. We're really trying to hit that 10,000 milestone. Anyway, we've been working on SWE and SWE builds since the beginning of Arc War. It's that special attribute that even gives free-to-play players or low-spending players a chance to compete with the highest level players if they can catch them slipping. Slipping meaning they're not wearing Resistance Weakened, the counter attribute to Strengthened Weakened gear. Now, in our last Strengthened Weakened video, we didn't have these pants. And we were limited on our hall choices, and the Commander Hancock wasn't even in the game. So there's a lot to talk about. It has changed a little bit. But here's what you should know up front. Uh, there is a guide for Strength and Weakened Effect, and basically there's a magic number. And that magic number is 400%. You can get this guide in the description below, or in any of the social groups, line groups. Uh, basically what it says is that infantry, if you have 400% SWE, can take zero damage from airships. And walkers can take zero damage from infantry, and airships can take zero damage from walkers. Those are their triangular special matchup. Well, at 400%, you take zero damage. Now, your opponent can counteract that with resistance weakened, and it takes about six and a half resistance weakened points to counter 10 strengthened weakened. And resistance weakened is generally easier to get. It comes in higher stats. You can get it on awaken. So it's very easy to counter sweet. But if your opponent is min-maxing and not getting resistance weakened, and remember, they can get it on Awaken and their own gems. There's a lot of ways to get it. Um, you can do amazing things. Speaking of amazing things, let's open with a replay. Now, if you watch our replay of the week show that we do every week, you will see a lot of SWE on display. And I keep saying I need to make a video about it, and here's this video. So this is Whoremaker. This is his uh, elf with a, a mix of Tier 9, Tier 11, and Tier 2 Walker troops. Now, each Tier 9 and Tier 11 advanced troop has different attributes in SWE, and that's what that previous graph was showing you, how they work. So, uh, I don't want to go through a whole SWE video. That's kind of explained in a different video, but basically, Tier 11 troops can SWE whatever they are, and then whatever their preferred matchup is. So, Tier 11 walkers can SWE other walkers and infantry if they have the 400% or more, uh, with the exception of Tier 11. So Tier 11 versus Tier 11 only sweeps uh, you know, the proper matchup. So in this replay, you're going to see Tier 9 walkers on stat or uh, slot 1 up here going against Tier 12 infantry. Now, those Tier 12 infantry on Gilly don't have tear space damage. Tear space is on the Tier 12 HP troop, and it can beat Sui, but in this case, he doesn't have the right troops. Uh, Gilly doesn't, so he's not going to be able to do the damage. So here's the hit, zero damage. That's the power of Sui. That's what this is all about. And you'll see, this is kind of a mixed-up march, but you can see Whoremaker knows what he's doing, right? And he only has Tier 9. The, the, the tier, 12, or tier 11 troops he had were just gifted troops from Baby Tyrant uh, events. So the same thing goes on here. Uh, what you're going to find is that this replay is through and through uh, ver very straightforward. Gilly had, can only hit back row uh, with her uh, awakening. So her troops in slot 5 are going to be able to break through. Her troops in slot 4 are going to be able to, no, not break through. So just the tier 9. Tier 9, tier 10 is kind of weird on the sweet chart. You could check that out. Uh, but basically, you know, the front row is going to hold. Eventually, Gilly's going to lose all these troops. Which brings us to our next point. If you're going to be doing a Swee March, don't just do one troop per slot. Yes, you can do it. Yes, it's super low risk. But sometimes you do amazing things. And you can catch somebody with a massive march. And you'll take zero damage throughout the whole fight. And because you don't have enough damage, you will ending, you'll end up zeroing out the fight. Or it'll go to its full duration. And then it'll stop. And then you didn't get to kill as many troops as you could. So maybe just put five troops. Five troops per slot. Or 20. And I'll put that on the next infograph. Um, but the reason Hancock gets brought up the most is because he has this special guild skill called Feral Strength. And Feral Strength removes your opponent's defense forever. Even if they trigger Super Immunity or Cassiopeia and go immune to debuffs, these will stay on and they are not purged off. So eventually Hancock will take anyone down to zero defense if the match goes long enough. And then with one trooper slot, he will just one shot everything because it's ridiculous. So uh, if you have a, a stat reducing skill like breakdown, um, you're going to be able to hit harder with one troop or five troops against a, a much larger army. Uh, but you'll never be able to kill more than 20 or 40 for every troop you have. So if you have one troop, you might only kill 40 on the other side when you could have killed 1,500. With Hancock, you can go all the way. 
So that's why I say uh, definitely go with five troops per slot, uh, at least in the front row, if you want to actually punish your opponent if they full march you or something ridiculous like that. Sui is just one of those marches you always have. There's a commander in your army. You have your main commander and you have your Sui gear for a Sui commander. For me, it's usually Hancock. For most people, it's usually Hancock. But it can be anyone. Anyone can wear the gear. You don't. It's not specific to Hancock. It just works really well with his Feral Strength skill. But Hancock doesn't have a guaranteed hit skill. So in order to land the hits, he's got to have the gems. Uh, so let's go to this guide. Now, this guide is probably the thumbnail of this video, is also available in the description below. Go ahead and click that link, and you can download it, share it with your guild, your friends, tell them about the video. Uh, this is that high-level, you know, infograph kind of video that a lot of people like, uh, and it's good reference material. So here's how you get Strength and Weaken effect in the modern age. Now, it should be noted, none of the gems actually provide the attribute Strength and Weaken effects. I put them here so that people realize what gems will actually work in their SWE builds because you need this to have guaranteed hit. Walkers get Leo and Taurus, right? Two guaranteed hits. Easy enough. Leo ignores stats. Very nice. I recommend that one over Taurus. Scorpio is just double damage. Cepheus is not a guaranteed hit, but it lowers defense, which makes you hit harder, and it stops them from healing. And you can get into fights with elves. Even if you have Swee gear on and you're hitting that elf, she might just start healing through it. Uh, same with Menderbot, which is going to be really popular with airships. Against infantry, this really isn't a problem. Uh, but hey, listen, if you need gems and you're trying to figure out which ones, these are the best ones for Swee, be Swee builds. Now, Gemini works on everyone, and Libra is a guaranteed hit, but you have to, like, you know, rip riposte the damage. It doesn't hit as hard. It's not that good. But technically, it's a guaranteed hit, and it works on all classes. Sagittarius is guaranteed hit for infantry. It ignores HP stats. Very good. So there's the gem. Now, let's talk how do we get to 400% strengthened, weakened effect. Well, the Gabriel Hole gives you the most strengthened, weakened effect at level 20. Aegis gives you 58, and Dawn gives you 29. 29 is almost, um, honestly almost negligible, right? That's not even 10% of, of your target. But it is something. And Dawn has penetration, which helps ignore those stats and hit harder. So if you're getting enough strength and weakening from your gear, you might still run Dawn just because you get that penetration, which is really nice. Uh, but you, these are your choices. Gabriel, if you're maxing out your Swede, go with the Gabriel Hall. All you're trying to do is take zero damage so your, your troops can do all the damage in as much time as you can. Okay, so let's talk gear. Okay, I always thought there was more strength and weakened effect gear, but there's actually not. It's just the Rabbit Ear Headband, which is at level 30, 240% and 6% per level. In a sense, the headbands have always been like two slots, but really it's one slot. They have double stats. And you'll notice that with like the Thalmuses, they had negative stats because they were so so high in stats per level. So in general, when you're leveling up your Swede gear, level up your headpiece first. You're going to get the most value per melange because it's 6% per level. Uh, then you get the Assault leg, uh, the Leggings, right? They also have Swede, and it's 3% per level, so it's just half as good as Rabbit Ears. And then you have your choice of weapons. You get two weapons, and you can wield the same ones, two Destructions or two Wild Roses. What's nice about the Wild Roses, even though they're lower stats at 2% per level, uh, upgrading the gear, uh, they have Penetration, which can be really good, like I was saying, on Swede builds. And it's so easy to get 400% Strength and Weaken now with the Assault Pants, which are new, uh, that you might opt for the Wild Roses. I personally do because I can easily break 600% Strength and Weaken effect with just this gear and my Gabriel Hall. And my stuff's level 30. I think it's really easy as a free-to-play or low-spending player to get to level 30 gear with all the Melange bots they give you nowadays. Uh, so within two to three months, it's pretty manageable for most low-spending players to get there. So everyone should have this set of gear. Now, I did add some special notes here. Uh, and if you do share this around on the line chats or the discords to your friend, I just want to have this mentioned out there. And also, this should be comboed with the SWE guide, right? So if you have this image, you should have this image too. Study it, master it. I, it's very simplified. It's almost too simplified. Uh, but if you stop and start thinking about it and understanding it and then get it, then use this as a reference. This is let this is more of a reference as opposed to the the teacher. And that's what the YouTube videos are for. Uh, just search Melt AOW um, SWE or SWE Guide, and I think that's that'll pull it up. Okay, so. Let's talk about the special points. Uh, okay, so level 20 gear without a haul can still easily break 400%. That's that magic number. Uh, resistance weaken, weaken uh, effect, the counter to SWE, is so popular on gems, hauls, gears, and awakens that extra SWE is good. So if you're doing a SWE build, go all in on SWE. Don't like say, oh, I'm gonna, I have enough SWE now, I'm going to do some dodge. If, you have, if you're going for the SWE build, max it out because if someone just has... I don't know, the Apocalypse Hall, it has 87% resistance weakened. If they have the Shadow Chest Beat, it has like 200 or 200% resistance weakened. So get as much Swee as you can if you're doing a Swee build. Okay, 
Remember, you still need to land the hit, so you've got to run at least one guaranteed hit gem, probably two, and you're going to be relying on those gems mostly to land those hits and survive uh, and, and not let your opponent recover. So choose your gems wisely, and that's based off what your troop type is. Um, use enough troops to kill an entire army. I see this so much in, resist in uh, Replay of the Week, the show we do once a week where people send in their own replays, where they just have this awesome SWE march, and they had this amazing opportunity to wipe out a massive amount of troops, but because they only use one or two troops per slot, they end up not doing enough damage, or their opponent starts healing too much. Uh, so put up five troops, ten troops. You can heal 15 troops of Tier 7 or Tier 9 or Tier 12, with, and, and then the, the the risk is, like, yeah, you might lose troops more often. Instead of losing four, you lose 15. Okay? That extra 11 troops might one day kill hundreds, if not thousands, of high tier against a big player that was trying to do something, you know, sneaky or uh, cheeky or whatever the British say. But um, anyway, I want to keep this video short so it doesn't deter people from looking at it. Uh, I hope you found this informative. And if you'd like to leave a like on the video, I would appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe. 10,000 subscribers. I'd really like to hit that number. Then we can launch the merch store. But... Uh, that wraps it up for this video. If I missed anything, check in the comments below. If you have any notes or in uh, interesting things to say, please add in the comments below. It's a very active comment section for the Arca War community. It's not just a normal music video YouTube channel with comments. We, we actually interact. Uh, and then check the description. There's a little arrow where you can download these images and check out all the other things I do, including Instagram, Patreon, the Line channels, the Discord. Uh, there's a lot of ways to interact and get your guild and your friends involved. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. My name's Melt. We will see you tomorrow.